Welcome to project two, where we're going to be learning how to optimize things. Optimization means that we're going to need to be able to find the vertex of a parabola and use that vertex to find the maximum or minimum value of a function. In case you weren't already aware, the vertex of a parabola is either the highest or lowest point on that parabola, hence the connection between vertex and maximum and minimum values of a function. While the problems in this project will be focused on more real-world applications, let's start off with a more abstract problem just to make sure we know how to find a vertex. y equals negative 200x squared minus 81x plus 70. Using the Desmos graphing calculator actually makes this problem pretty easy. All I'm going to do is type in that equation. So I just typed in y equals negative 200x squared minus 81x plus 70, our equation, and you see I get some sort of graph here. Now I'm going to play around with my, my fingers here to try to look for this graph. This should be a downward facing graph since it's a negative quadratic and right there I found my, my peak. Okay, I found my peak right here and all you have to do is you just have to touch that point and Desmos will tell you the ordered pair. And that right there is our vertex. The x is negative 0 0.2025 and the y is 78.201. All right, let's move on to an applied problem. This example two, we are going to rely on some of the information that we learned in the catering project here. So we have a cost function here for manufacturing X tires. It's going to cost $200 plus $18 per tire. And then we have the price function down here that says that the smart amount to charge your customers is $60 minus however many tires you're making. So now we're going to use those two functions to go and find a revenue function and a profit function. So in the catering project, we just found revenue and profit as constants. In this project, we're going to be finding revenue and profit functions. So revenue, we learned, was equal to the number of items that you're going to sell times how much you're charging for them. So this would be, we're selling X tires, so this is going to be X times how much we're charging for them, which would be 60 minus X, the price function. 60 minus X. Now if you want to, you can simplify that to 60X minus X squared by distributing. Now the profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. Well we just learned from the last part that the revenue is equal to 60X minus X squared and the cost here will be 200 plus 18x. We could simplify that, but I'm just going to leave it in this unsimplified form, which will work for our purposes. Now what they ask us to do is to find an x that results in the maximum revenue and another x that results in a maximum profit. So we are going to be doing two parts here. One part is going to be max revenue, and the other part is going to be max profit. Now, in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to go and find the vertex of each of those equations. So if I want max revenue, I'm going to go and type the revenue function into my graphing calculator. So there we have 60x minus x squared in our graphing calculator. And if I scroll around, I find the vertex right here at 3900. So if my vertex is at 3,900, 30 is the X, which means that's how many tires I need to sell. And if I sell that many tires, I will get a maximum revenue of $900. Now let's do the same thing with that profit function. So you see I typed in this profit function and now I'm going to move around until I find the vertex. Here it is. I'll click that and I get a vertex of 21, 241. Now, this means that if I sell 21 tires, I'll make a profit of $241. Don't get confused here. This $900 was $900 of revenue. 
that meant $900 coming in. This is $241 of profit. That means I actually get to put $241 in my pocket. So the ideal number of tires to sell if I'm interested in making the most profit possible would be 21 tires. If I just want the most money coming in possible, then I want to sell 30 tires. All right, for the remaining problems, the focus is more so going to be on the setup than it is going to be the actual vertex process. So for this problem, we're selling a container of Silly Putty that's going to have a square base. It's going to be a box with a square base. That looks something like this. Now, we're asked to determine the minimum surface area. Now, surface area is found by taking all of the individual faces. So here's a face, here's a face, here's a face, and there's three that we don't really see, and adding all of them up. So surface area would equal this face plus this face. Now, their individual areas are x by x. So x squared. The reason I knew this was an x by x base was because we were told it was a square base. So those two side lengths have to be the same. So we have two of those x times x or x squared faces. We also have an x by h face. We actually have four of them. Two we see and two we don't. So we have plus 4xh. Now the problem here with this surface area formula that we would love to minimize is that we have two variables besides the surface area. We have x and we have h. We don't want two variables there. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work. That's why they told us that the volume needs to be 150. This is a constraint that's going to help us. So volume equals length times width times height. Our length and width are x and x, and our height is h. So our volume of 150 equals our length x times our width x times our height h. In other words, 150 equals x squared h. Now the reason this is useful for us is because it includes x and h. That means we could get h alone here and be able to plug it into the other equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by x squared, and I'm going to get h equals 150 divided by x squared. Now this can be plugged into the surface area function to get rid of h. So our surface area equals 2x squared plus 4x, and instead of h, we're going to write 150 divided by x squared. The value of what I just did is that this surface area function can now be minimized because it only has one variable besides surface area, which is really just a y. So now I'm going to go into my Desmos graphing calculator and I'm going to graph this equation. Instead of surface area, I'm going to write y equals and then I'm going to put that function, 2x squared plus 4x times 150 over x squared. Now you may notice that a lot is going on with this graph, but I don't really care about what's happening when it's negative. x in this case represents a side length, if we remember from this picture. Well, x can't be negative because you can't have a negative side length. I'm going to click on the wrench in the top right corner to change the settings of this graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to change this x-axis to start at x equals 0. You see the blinking cursor, that tells you where I'm starting my x. Now, as I look at the new graph, I can clearly see the vertex here at 5.313, comma, 169.386. So I'm going to copy that over and we're going to consider what that means. This is our x value over here. This tells us that our base length should be 5.313, and this problem wasn't really specific about units, that y tells us that the minimum surface area, because y was the surface area in this equation, should be 169.386 units squared. This answers our question 
of what the minimum surface area was, which was our original goal for this problem.